months into the coronavirus pandemic, we're a few steps closer to having a vaccine. But getting the first doses to the public is no small task. Here's what has to happen first. Vaccine makers must develop and test potential vaccines. After identifying the virus, vaccine scientists work to find biochemical ways to train the immune system to recognize and thwart the virus from spreading in the human body. That solution then must be synthesized into a vaccine. That can require innovative and new uses of technology. Each potential vaccine must be run through several phases of testing before being approved for use. Once the results seem promising to an independent group of scientists, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration reviews the data. It can then grant emergency use authorization or full approval, which requires a higher standard of data and review. Paying for the research and development of a vaccine is expensive. Seven vaccine makers won funding from the federal program Operation Warp Speed by the beginning of November 2020 to make at least 300 million doses of COVID-19 vaccines. Dr. Anthony Fauci, the top infectious disease expert at the National Institutes of Health, says the point of Operation Warp Speed was not to speed up the science of developing a vaccine. It was to pay for it up front freeing vaccine makers of any financial risk as they produce large quantities of vaccines that were not yet proven safe or effective. Operation Warp Speed is now preparing to coordinate the distribution of these vaccines across the U.S. with state and local governments. After a vaccine is developed and approved, it needs to get to people, which is no small logistical task. Some vaccines require specific temperatures to remain viable. This means production, transportation, and storage operations must have cooling or temperature control management. With COVID-19, the intention is to vaccinate millions of people in the United States rather quickly. That means millions of doses distributed to clinics and hospitals in some organized way while keeping the drug at appropriate temperatures. Because of the urgency of COVID-19, Operation Warp Speed has worked for months to prepare state and local governments for the distribution process. They have set up vaccine freezer farms across the country, partnered with shipping companies like UPS and pharmacy chains like CVS, and directed states to identify large and small vaccine distribution centers that can keep track of who has received the vaccine at what time. The vaccine could require some special accommodation. In the case of Pfizer, the doses would be packed in special thermal containers specifically for delivery via air to distribution hubs. Several of the leading vaccines also require two doses. That means that distributors of the vaccines must keep track of who is getting which vaccine and at what time in order to make sure they are contacted for their second dose. It's likely that some Americans will be at the front of the line to get the vaccine. People who get priority status would include those who are healthcare providers, medically vulnerable, and frontline workers. That status could vary by state. Operation Warp Speed has asked states to identify priority groups in their own individualized distribution plans. There's the question of whether the U.S. will choose to solely distribute the vaccine to Americans or globally. The World Health Organization proposed distributing vaccines globally at a rate proportional to each country's population. Global distribution would require even more planning, organization, and coordination. The Biden transition team says that global coordination of vaccine distribution will be the priority of the incoming administration. Eventually, we'll have a vaccine ready to distribute to millions and perhaps even billions of people by the end of 2021. And though it may seem like a vaccine took a while, the year-long turnaround is actually pretty quick. The fastest ever vaccine development to date, for the mumps, took more than four years.